Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's pray, and then we'll get started. Yeah. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you. We praise you. We give you thanks. We thank you for this week, Lord. We thank you for, um, Lord, that uh, um, you are in every day and you are in every week. Um, you know the end from the beginning, Lord, the all-knowing one, the one who is good, the one who is good all the time, the one whose thoughts for us are good thoughts, plans for us are good plans, purposes for us, good purposes. Father, we thank you that we have you as our God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Lord, even as we draw near, we draw near with thanksgiving. You know, let's just give him thanks. Let's give him praise. Let's thank him for who he is. Father, we thank you, Lord. You've, you, Lord, you're our savior. You're our healer. You're, you're our deliverer. You're our provider. And Father God, we know that uh, these are not just empty words, God, but these are, Lord, um, these, are, these are who you are and uh, who you've, uh, Lord, introduced yourself to be, Lord, in your word. And Lord, we as your people, we've experienced this, oh God. And I just pray that uh, even as we get to know you, that we will, we will experience all of these, God, in an even greater measure in the coming days, Father God, as the deliverer, as the provider, oh God, as the bondage breaker. Yes, Father God, we thank you. We thank you. As the God of miracles, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you for every blessing. We thank you for the, your presence, Father God. Um, the greatest blessing of all, oh God. And we thank you for salvation, the greatest gift of all. We thank you, God. We thank you for all that we, Lord, enjoy, the peace that we enjoy, Lord, despite all circumstances, uh, despite all challenges. Your peace, oh God, your supernatural peace, which goes beyond, oh God, and above and beyond our reasonings, God. We thank you, Master. We thank you. Oh God, we thank you. We bless your name. You know, in Hebrews 4, we also see that uh, we are called to draw near uh, with, uh, in confidence, in boldness, to receive grace and to receive mercy. So even as we draw near with thanksgiving, we can also draw near with expectation to receive, to receive grace and mercy. So let's, let's do that as well. Let's ask the Lord to, to pour out his grace, to pour out his mercy. Even as we don't draw near with boldness, even as we draw near with confidence, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. We, God, we, we, we thank you that uh, you consider us to be recipients of your grace, Lord. You've called us to be recipients of your mercy, Father God. We thank you, and we thank you. We can, Lord, call upon your name. We thank you that we, uh, you are accessible, accessible to us, Lord, and you made the way clear. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing, oh God, uh, interrupting. There's nothing in the way. And we draw near with confidence, Lord, to receive your grace, to receive your mercy. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. Thank you for the cleansing. Thank you for the washing. Thank you, Master. Thank you for the confidence that we have in you, God. Thank you for clothing us with your righteousness, God. We thank you. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We thank you. Yes, Lord, we come at this day, we come at this week into your mighty hands. Yes, Lord, continue to lead us, continue to unfold your plans and purposes in our lives, Lord. We just want to live for you and we want to be um, doing things, thinking things, Lord, uh, being, Lord, people who, who are well-pleasing to you, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, God bless those of you who joined us now. Uh, welcome. God bless. I see the class is full. Hey, just a couple of announcements before we um, progress. Uh, I just want to know, uh, are there people here who are not part of um, uh, the biblical preaching class? If you can just put your hand up, please. Um, you're saying, I'm here, I've signed up for this course, Minister, uh, Minister of the Pastor Evangelist Teacher, but I'm not in um, a biblical preaching or homiletics class. Anyone like that over here? No? So everyone signed up for both the courses. Okay, that's that makes things simpler. Okay, um, so today will be the last session for uh, uh, this course. 
ministry of the pastor, evangelist, teacher. And also just want to make this announcement for those of you who are on the e-learning platform that uh, today is the uh, the last session for this course. And there will be um, the, the online tests, which will be uh, um, the, the grading grading for the course, the graded test, which will be released um, later. So you can be mindful of that. Just check that out. But today will be the last uh, class for this course. Okay. And for the online uh, students, uh, for those of you who are here, um, uh, from next Monday onwards, what we'll do is we'll, we'll the, the, in case some of you just stumble onto this, um, this classroom, I'll put up the link for the other course, which is, uh, which is biblical preaching. So even if you come here, you just click and you'll be um, redirected to that course, right? So, so uh, I'll put that in the stream. So we'll, we'll join in the, both on Mondays, as well as uh, the biblical preaching class, which is on Wednesdays, we'll, um, we'll do biblical preaching. Yeah. So we'll have the presentations and probably 30 minutes of teaching followed by presentations. So yeah. Uh, and those of you who have not yet signed up for the presentation, for the sermon presentation, uh, please do that. Um, you know, you can fill in on the first page, you fill in the sermon topic and, uh, you know, the sermon title and the main points. And on the second page, the second tab, which is there, uh, you can sign up for, um, sorry, I mean, you, you know your schedule, so you can plan accordingly, right? Okay. Um, so... Let's uh, go as per that schedule. Okay, and for the e-learning platform, of course, this doesn't apply. You just prepare your message, and as instructed, uh, you know, in the discussions, you record it and you put it on the discussions page. And uh, you know, I'll get back to you uh, with with comments and feedback. So all you have to do is record it and put it on the discussions. You have put the link uh, for your video sermon video on the um, discussions page, right? Okay, so let's uh, uh, let's continue from where we left off. Uh, last class, we were looking at uh, the life of the life and ministry of the pastor and uh, which pastor were we um, uh, discussing? Anyone? We... Pastor Ashish. Okay, <laughs> Pastor Ashish. And we did some trivia also on his uh, yeah. name. Anyone remember the full name? Yes, Pastor Ashish Srikanth Raichur. Yeah, it's Ashish Srikanth Raichur, not Pastor. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. So that's uh, that's correct. So um, so we looked at um, you know the life early uh, early on how he started off, and we see the apostolic grace, the anointing. Uh, so uh, whichever season of life you see him, uh, you know, starting a new work like planting a work um, which which would grow, which would become, uh, you know, even a church. Uh, and also he served in, uh, you know, existing churches as well. But you see the apostolic grace, which is to start a work where uh, there is no no work. And also we see the, the pastoral, you know, the gathering of people, the nurturing in the word uh, and enabling people to discover the call and uh, purpose and of course i shared uh, my own testimony of uh, you know having discovered the the call of god in um, uh, in 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 this church you know and you just uh, came here to visit to to serve as a visiting uh, minister you know in worship and um, you know the the prophetic word coming there and then um, and then and, and then and a lot of things happened after that but they you know um, uh, really God's sense of humor. He brought me here, uh, the prophetic word that he's called me to be a pastor and then ended up serving in the same church after, you know, I, I think maybe four years after that prophecy, I ended up serving in the same church, you know, starting as a volunteer and then uh, and then on to become staff uh, serving full time. Right? And, and so gradually discovering the prophetic call, being trained in it um, uh, as, uh, uh, you know, as we as we began to attend the church and so on. So um, so that is uh, something that uh, happened uh, also about the life uh, of Pastor Ashish, you know, um, personal growth, uh, personal spiritual growth and prayer and uh, uh, quiet time um, uh, with the Lord as not a, as, as something that is foundational, as something that is given and not something which is optional. Okay, and uh, and uh, I'm just going to be you know sharing some stories. So um, 
just to uh, my observations uh, so you know you uh, it's something that for us to learn as well so um, so this happened early on in 2005 2006 so um, you know we were going for a meeting we were going for a uh, this was a, a meeting which was happening in sometime some place in uh, you know north karnataka belgaum um, hubli at belgaum you know, these are two cities close to each other. Um, so we were going for one of the meetings there. I think it was Hubli. So we were going there, and then uh, I think a group of uh, I don't know, maybe ten or twelve of us going in a train. And uh, so around, uh, you know, uh, the train reaches uh, Hubli maybe around seven or eight ish. I forget, uh, uh, or maybe six thirty. But uh, I noticed that around three or four. I I saw Pastor Ashish, uh, you know, get up from this his uh, bunk, his uh, berth uh, in the train, and then get up and go. Uh, then uh, I thought he was going to the restroom, so but I didn't see him come come back for a long time. So then uh, I I wanted to go to the restroom, so I went, and then I saw him standing, you know, in. Uh, in between that area there, uh, you know, where you have the restrooms in the in the train, so standing there and just praying, uh, just praying and praying in the spirit, and uh, so I, it was around three thirty four ish. So then I just said hello and came back. Then I was thinking to myself, yeah, uh, you know, he was the main speaker for the uh, for the meeting. So this meeting was about two days or three days. So yeah, I know he must be preparing. So he's, he's praying and preparing. And so uh, I didn't quite expect that, you know, on the train at three o'clock in the morning. So we went for the meeting, we finished the meetings, um, and we were on our way back. And that particular Sunday, we had a guest speaker. And, uh, you know, this, so uh, and those days, we just had two locations. Right. Uh, we right now we have five locations, church locations in Bangalore. Um, uh, those days we just had uh, two locations: one the central location, Bangalore Central, and then the other one South, Bangalore South. So you know, there's two locations, and and we had a guest speaker, right, speak at both locations. And so um, for that particular Sunday, so um, so anyway, so we were all coming back, and uh, and again, you know, on the journey back. Uh, back to Bangalore, and we were arriving. I think it's probably Saturday morning. Um, I noticed the same thing: three o'clock, get up and go. So, uh, and I was I was curious this time, so I just went and kind of saw what he was doing. So he was again, you know, praying uh, deep in prayer, you know, and uh, and then I realized, you know, uh, so prayer was not an option. Right? Um, for this for this person and uh, a very valuable lesson right so i knew in my mind you know this is this is a time to relax you just finished a meeting um you've uh, you know three days of ministering and you know it was right from the whole day you know? so this is a time to just relax and uh you know you have a guest speaker speaking on sunday so you don't have to you know really uh, intensely prepare or something um so you can just relax but that was not so, at least for him. You know, his time with God was something that was guarded, precious, something that 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 was there as a lifeline. You know, it was not there as an option. His time with God. So that was a very valuable lesson um, that I learned um, as I observed that um, in you know as a minister of God, you know, as a child of God, really, um, that time with God is. It's really is a privilege for us, right? And it's something that is uh, not an option. It is as important for us as as eating, drinking, breathing. Even uh, it is our lifeline, right? So that is something that stayed with me through the years uh, to realize that hey, you know, you don't take time off from God. <laughs> you know, you could be on vacation, but you don't take time off from God because He is our lifeline and our, um, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not saying that you need to kind of, you know, physically work yourself up and always be paranoid about it, but then really enjoying the presence of God and uh, being in the presence of God is uh, is really a privilege for us. So make use of that, right? Um, so that's something I realized. Personal uh, spiritual growth, personal time with God is not an option. It's not for the sake of ministry. You know, that was something that it's not just to prepare a message uh, because uh, it can it can easily become that. 
you can easily come to that uh, one when one gets into the um, so-called full-time ministry you know there is a uh, there is a, that pressure to of course um, to share with, uh, the word there is that that internal pressure to uh, to prepare etc you know because week in and week out so that is always there but uh, the time uh, our time with god is not uh, is not just for that it's not just for that particular event or a weekend service uh, it is uh, something that we enjoy something that we uh, we need to enjoy and it is something as important for us as breathing and uh, and the lord jesus made it very clear man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and uh, uh, you know the, that word used there is rhema every word and how can we uh, you know receive the rhema from god unless we spend time uh, in the word and uh, in his presence right so uh, that's a, that's an important lesson um also personal life and character uh, uh, holding oneself accountable to a very high moral standard uh, uh, being impartial and being a person of integrity is also something you know there were many um, like uh, one of the instances is uh, um, uh, for the for a pastor to conduct uh, a wedding right to conduct a, a wedding ceremony uh, and to officiate and to uh, to legally do that you know you know uh, you need to get a license from the government and then it's a long procedure here uh, i don't know how it is now but it it was a long procedure you know doing this and that and and then um, the people whom we contacted to in order to get a license also you know always suggested some some shortcuts and uh, and because we didn't have a church location you know we all our church locations are um, either rented or we use facilities which uh, which are you know given freely uh, one of them you know is a, it's a it's a school which which is given um, the the policy of the school is for us to you know for churches to have a service there so so th- uh, things like that so we don't have our own church building right uh, at, at least not yet so so the the thing is uh, as part of this giving of this license apparently you know the the official comes and visits and checks the, the you know where is the church meeting etc so anyway um, so once we there is a police verification so when we went to the police station and then uh, you know thing so so people were, the the questions asked were you know where does the church meet and uh, so he said hey we don't uh, we don't have uh, this thing as yet but the person who was helping or getting the paperwork done said uh, you don't know just say this you know say that this is where you meet uh, but he said no that's that's our office that's our registered office the church doesn't meet there no no but it's okay you just tell them so he just left the place and came and uh, from then Uh, you know from that day from that year we didn't even bother applying but we made use of uh, the of uh, services of the you know god really provided that avenue services of the registrar of christian marriages so for our you know for the weddings that we do the registrar of christian marriages is here to to you know get the paperwork done so that we can conduct the ceremony and uh, you know the wedding ceremony but the registrar is there to to do the paperwork and to make it legal as per the uh, norms of the of the government right so um, so we see that uh, there are no shortcuts no um, no compromises when it comes to you know these kind of things so um, uh, observe that as well um another yeah another aspect very important uh, aspect of uh, ministry is also the rhythm of ministry you know the what we call as a work life balance um, now i when i when i joined uh, the ministry i observed that um, i saw that uh, you know pastor ashish was running his software business and of course the ministry which was again growing um, that is the time when we uh, started the bible college uh, 2005 and um, and also there were other things you know church plans uh, uh, church locations uh, uh, coming up in bangalore city itself um so one by one and so um, so there was a lot of workload both in terms of ministry the software business of also growing and and of course a family and uh, you know uh, two children and spending time with them and so on but um, i see that um, you know he had this or uh, still has that rhythm of ministry you know when it comes to uh, when it comes to family 
and there's nothing you know there's no um uh, no negotiation you know family time is family time and uh, and the understanding that the god who called him to ministry is the god who designed family marriage and family right so um for us to have that understanding as well to say that you know it it seems noble to say you know um oh i'm i'm really busy i'm busy, really working busy for the lord i'm going here traveling here going doing this uh, attending uh, or you know going for meetings and preaching in this meeting sharing in this meeting or some other evangelistic meeting here there and I, um, and to say that you know i don't even have time for family but i'm doing all this seems very noble but really uh, that is misplaced uh, zeal you know or a misplaced enthusiasm for ministry really because you are we are neglecting completely what god has designed for us and uh, you know and skewed to one aspect of life in ministry and uh, what we need to understand and realize is that if this gets affected if family life if marriage and family is affected then it's going to creep into ministry as well right and the lord who created uh, or invited us for ministry is the one who designed uh, family and marriage so therefore that needs to be taken care of as well and i remember saturdays when the children were growing up that he would not schedule anything you know no 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 appointments no meetings uh, nothing at all um and uh, you know play football with the children um uh, uh, and then take them for music classes or you know anything like that so something like that so he would take care of that right so um so the importance of that importance of family um again coming through you know and not not feeling guilty about it really you know of course there will be some emergencies uh, maybe some funerals to take care of maybe some you know some some uh, unexpected things um and yes the family will understand at those times but really as a as a as a routine to to carve that portion and say you know uh, as much as you know this is what i will do for ministry in terms of ministry there's no compromise on that but this is what i will do for the family no compromise on that as well okay so that was something that I, again i learned um uh, from uh, the life uh, of uh, and the ministry of pastor ashish okay so uh, i think we we just started by looking at the ministry aspect of it uh, and the church uh, so let me um, just share a little bit of that so um like you know we shared last time uh and i kind of rushed through it so i just i'm just taking time to just uh, go over it again um uh, so the church started uh, in 2001 um very humble beginnings 12 12 people living room his father's house and that was how it was um but what i noticed then is that uh, when when god gives the vision um you don't downplay it right god gives a big vision uh and whatever vision you know however it, in our human understanding it could be big or in our human uh, scale that we have it could be big but really it's it's nothing in god's eyes right it's uh, yeah. so it's a vision which god has given and like paul says it's a, i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision right so don't uh, don't no need to trivialize it no need to downplay it it's a vision it's god given is go with it right and one thing i realized was uh, not to dis- despise the day of small beginnings you know it you, you will start small um or you might start it very big that's absolutely okay but don't despise the day of small beginnings right you know maybe it's just three people and uh, uh, and that's how the church uh, or the ministry starts but don't despise it be faithful um don't don't uh, trivialize it um uh, but you know just be faithful and go after it um just want to share about uh, the church location where um, where i serve and this um, this was started sometime after soon after and it's in a uh, south of bangalore it's it's not a very cosmopolitan now it is it is it's not a very cosmopolitan um you know uh, in terms of demographics like you have uh, the typical the the actual bangaloreans there you know you see a lot of the local language be spoken uh, being spoken there and now of course we have a lot of migration from other parts of the country you know people coming there but, but typically you hear a lot you know if you go to central bangalore you you will 
you'll hear hindi you will being spoken you'll hear a lot of english being spoken but if you go to south bangalore you will uh, you will hear a lot of the local language which is kannada being spoken right so that's in terms of demographics that's how it is so um so that church was planted soon after uh, i think a couple of years after the the central um, location was planted and um, uh, what i want to you know highlight here is that uh, the effort that was taken you know just to say that you know don't despise the day of small beginnings like when the church was started in the location um the where it was the venue it was a it was a, again a rented place uh, um a hall and um, initially the first service i think uh, some people from you know the central location also went there just to encourage uh, uh, you know and be there part of the prayer and worship and so on but from the second service onwards it was just maybe two people and at the most three one would one is the pastor pastor ashish the other one someone to lead worship i think it was uh, um uh, pastor georgi uh, who was uh, part of you know who was there in bangalore india at that time and one other person maybe to help or or sometimes it will be just two people and and this service you know this sunday ministry so it will be like you know you go open the place um well maybe we might have to clean up the place and get things ready go there uh okay start you know the time of prayer and worship and then maybe share the word and then again lock up and come back now the the distance uh, from the residence to this place is uh, i think about uh, let me just check okay um um very quickly sorry i i should have checked earlier um okay it takes about uh, it's about 22 kilometers and in bangalore traffic it takes about uh, an hour or so okay one way um this is uh, to drive down right okay so um so to go to travel one hour you know and this is morning early morning uh, to start the service to do do that and then to go to the second uh, service which is uh, what we call as a bangalore central and minister there and then go back home and monday you know go back to your software business right monday and of course uh, the needs of the church the responsibilities of the church which will just come in uh, during the week whenever now this went on for uh, it's not just one sunday not just two sundays this went on for many sundays right uh, i'm thinking at least 3 months at least 12 sundays before the uh, the first family started coming right and then the work grew from there um so you know when when god gives a vision to persist to endure and to press on right um it it is yeah it, it could be tiring it could be discouraging at times sense you know which might really uh, bring you to a point of really questioning you know did i hear right but when you know for sure when god that god has spoken and that that god has called and uh, to assist right and uh, when at that point when at the point when i came there the the, the church was about i think 20 people 25 people and and you know it is uh, over the years you've seen it grow and yes there is potential for more growth and a lot more work needs to be done but it continues to grow right um so so being faithful even when things are small very important what i noticed from the ministry right uh, the other thing second thing that I, again i noticed was um commitment to the vision commitment to the territory okay commitment to the vision commitment to the territory very very important um uh, non negotiable you know sometimes what happens is um people are okay committed to the vision and then when they don't see right they don't see things happening then they either alter the vision to suit you know cut it down to suit their um uh, understanding or convenience or shift territories right 
um, but to be committed to say that you know I'm committed to this place, this people, um, till you know till God you know till you take me, right? Till the work is done, or till you move me, right? to be committed to that, uh, to the land, to the territory. You know, because um, like I mentioned, uh, Pastor and Amy were in the U.S. and as software uh, in software business. Um, uh, at the time, of course, didn't have the business, but was working for us uh, for another organization. But so the trend was, of course, to to go to settle, uh, you know, overseas to have live a comfortable life, and of course, you know, uh, visit and maybe take care of ministry, whatever, you know. So, but then to to come back and to know that okay, this is the area, or this is the this is the territory, um, this is the land, these are the people. So to be to to be committed and to remain committed, right? It's very very important through the passage of time, through the seasons, to through the ups and downs, to remain committed. And I think that is very very crucial. That is crucial, and it doesn't mean that you don't minister elsewhere, right? Or you don't travel elsewhere, but uh, some of the mistakes which which are costly, you know, mistakes which people made what i've observed is that um, you know as to um well god has call, called them to a place uh forgetting that or you know over a period of time because things were tough to take a easier route to travel and minister as an itinerant minister okay uh, now that seems that seems well easy uh, in the sense there is already a congregation someone else is taking care of the congregation so you do a teaching of you know uh, as a guest uh, minister uh, going to different places and doing that well again you know i'm just saying this very carefully because for some god has called you know especially as a teacher be an itinerant ministry and it will be works uh, in places where there is already a work and then somebody started that and you go there to you know uh, like apollos or you know um, well, like we read in scripture, we see that to go to strengthen that work, that is also, you know, God's plan. That is that is very much uh, biblical. But I'm saying, you know, if God has called you to a place and then you focus on all the other places because it's exciting and, um, you know, and here you have to come back to five people. You know, there, there is at least, you know, you, maybe there are 50, there are 500, and then you feel more validated as a minister, you know, and then you come back to the five and then you feel that. So you're spending more time out than here. And in the initial phase or stage of ministry where it needs to be strong where the work needs to be strong where it, you know it's like a building that foundation digging up all that dirt and putting things uh, and the structure is not yet there so if we ignore the foundation or ignore building up at that phase you know it's never going to be strong right you know, because we're going focusing on so many other things than uh, what needs to be done so commitment to territory commitment to the vision it, it's very very important so I, i'm sure you've um, you know you've uh, seen or heard the vision of all people's church um the vision and the mission statement so i just thought uh, maybe for those of us who have not uh, just play that video which we um recently put together and maybe you can all watch it together just a minute please And welcome to All People's Church. Our vision at All People's Church is to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation and to the nations. All People's Church is a Jesus-loving, word-focused, spirit-filled family church, an equipping center, a mission space, and a word outreach. As a family church, we grow together as a community in Christ-centered fellowship, caring and serving each other in love. As an equipping center, we empower and equip every believer to live victoriously, mature into Christ-likeness and fulfill God's purposes for their lives. As a mission space, we engage in meaningful ministry to bless our city, our nation and the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ through the word of God and supernatural demonstrations of the power of the Spirit. 
As a world outreach, we serve locally and globally by nurturing godly leaders and spirit-filled churches who can impact their regions for the kingdom of God. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for being with us today. Okay. Right, so I just thought... Uh... I think most of you would have seen that if you're following the service. Um, yeah, so um, so that is, uh, you know, the vision. So like we, you know, we have discussions on the vision. Um, the vision needs to be uh, communicated. It cannot be just in our heart, in our minds. You know, as a spiritual leader, you need to communicate the vision. And um, since we are all human beings, we tend to forget. Vision tends to leak. Uh, and so it needs to be reiterated. Um, so we do that every Sunday with the church announcements um, and also, you know, put it up in, in our communications in our church website and so on. So, um, so we do that, right? Um, oh yeah, uh, Charles, yes. Uh, the thing is, is, the second part of it, you know, as being a, a church family, um, uh, as, uh, you know, as missions and, and the world outreach, you know, those, those were additions to it. Um, so, yeah, that's why it's a little, uh, little more detailed. Um, but the vision itself is, you know, to be salt and light uh, to the city, a voice to the nation, and to the nations. Right. Um, so, so this is, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, reiterated. And of course, uh, it's great to have a vision, but vision also means uh, work, right? Uh, it it just means. Uh, 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 the bigger the vision, the bigger the work. So we need to understand that vision. Um, uh, I just put it here. You know, vision equals work. Yeah, Kennedy. Just a minute. I see. I see your hand. Yeah, I'm coming back. Okay. So we see that um, you know, vision equals work. So we, uh, as ministers of God, you know, you need. Uh, it, it's exciting to have a great vision and and hear you know uh, maybe a prophetic word and say or or you know uh, you have a dream and you you know you call to the nations but uh, or call to the nations and uh, you know call for a, a great work um, but you need to understand that that means work it means labor uh, intense labor right we need to understand that yeah Kennedy you have a question. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. What I want, what I was asking is that um, talk about how you are getting your finances from the start. Mm, finances yeah, I think yeah, yeah, put it on. From the beginning, for beginners, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So um, finances, yeah, sure. Um, I, I also, you know, next year we will have a, a full-fledged course on church administration right, um, for the third year, and uh, you'll find it very, very interesting extremely interesting so it goes into a lot of details of the working of the ministry uh, uh, it's a very useful course to um, you know uh, if you're even if you're not planning to do other courses i think you should do that right. okay but anyway uh, with regard to financing um, right from the beginning it's uh, supported by uh, the believers in uh, in uh, in the country in the nation and uh, by those who uh, so which means tithes and offerings right from from the church members and those who worship um, that's the uh, thing and right from the beginning uh, you know the accounting process and everything very transparent and um, uh, very um, what, what is the word i should say um, you know uh, always um, making a note of that record of that in fact i, I came across a, a notebook uh, that was there in the initial days right um, uh, i think the first few meetings so it was a notebook it was handwritten and, and about tithes and offerings and what were the expenses towards you know tea and coffee after the service and so on it was really um so uh, to to understand that as well and to implement that as well so one one side is okay people are giving tithes offerings and then to implement uh, and say okay um, um to or also the other aspect is also to start uh, you know, separate bank account, so that doesn't interfere with your personal money. You know, even though this work might be small, to have a separate bank account for the church, so everything goes into the church. Expenses come out of that, and so on. Okay. Um, so, uh, so this is how it has been functioning. Um, bank loans, no. Yeah. So maybe you could ask some specific questions, uh, when Kennedy. Yeah, I'll just put in a few things here, a few more thoughts here. So. 
uh, you know specific bank account for the income and expenditure uh, um, and also recording of that so proper accounting procedure um, and and everything else you know so that you're not uh, there's no shortcut you're not breaking any rules um, rules of the government and so on so there's no um, you know uh, hands fingers being pointed at you and your ministry is not blamed uh, you know, and you're playing everything by the rules right so so that aspect of it uh, and the other thing is uh, um, uh, the church also does not have what what is called as uh, in India called as an FCRA, which means we don't have a, a means to receive uh, you know uh, foreign uh, funds or currencies. As long as there's a Indian account, you know we can do that, and uh, so that's that's how it uh, it's worked. So so the ministry is supported by uh, the people uh, types of offerings from from the church itself. Right. So that's, uh, that's how. Yeah. So uh, bank loans, no, uh, we did not uh, consciously have avoided that and uh, not wanting to be in debt. So no bank loans. Um, as far as, uh, well, uh, staffing and salaries grow, uh, go, you know, uh, we are a registered trust. And so um, we also have uh, people serving as volunteers, people serving as staff, full-time staff. And for the initial um, years of ministry, since Pastor was having the software business, he was not taking a salary from church. In fact, the software business was tithing uh, 10% of the, um, you know, the, the, the income of the business was you know, being tithed into the ministry. So that was happening. Um, so uh, as full-time staff, staff, of course, we have that entire headshot process of salaries and, uh, you know, appraisals and assessment of work, um, all that is in place. So I think at least twice a year, we, we have an assessment of work, of our responsibilities, whether we are you know, doing according to what we are supposed to be doing and the quality of it and so on and course corrections and so on. So we have that in place. And uh, yeah, so, um, so, so it's it's so salaries also you know support of the staff and past uh, the staff and uh, uh, pastors is is also not something random but it's already it's in paper um, on paper and fixed and uh, uh, and so on so yeah any other questions that you might have. about finances. Okay, so all the other procedures of having, a, you know, we have a, a, a firm which, accounting firm, which takes care of the, the accounting process and making sure that we comply uh, according to what is, uh, you know, what is expected by the government and so on, you know, filing of um, uh, returns, um, so on. Okay. If you have questions, you uh, feel free to put it up. You know, even if you, if something comes to your mind later. Okay. So commitment to the territory, commitment to the vision, uh, again very important, and to continue and be consistent. Uh, you know, uh, that is again very very important. Not to, uh, you know, not to have. You know, there will be seasons with, with, which are you know difficult. There are times which are difficult uh, situations. Um, which might be very, very challenging, but to continue on consistently, you know, that is something that I've learned uh, from the church and ministry. Um, uh, another aspect of it is to, you know, when, right, I'm, uh, you know, I'm sure in the local church, you're, again, you know, you might have, you know, the, the, the different phases that the church goes through, right? That the foundation stage and the, and the you know, the, the building stage and, uh, and so on. So, so the thing is to build by, um, Built by inspiration, I'll really just put it here. Uh, I've seen both happening. Build in this in the sense, build by inspiration in the sense. I, I, you know, you know, everything about ministry is you know we are led by the spirit of god we are dependent on on god and submitted to him you know but, but there are there are these uh, times when uh, you you are inspired to do something right you are inspired to start something you are inspired by the holy spirit of course you're inspired to you know maybe go in a take a particular 
ministry direction you're inspired to do that right um so build by inspiration in the sense you you know god leads you 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 do that uh, you obey that um you know check verify and and do that and a lot of uh, ministry initiatives have come like that you know build by inspiration you know you see a need and then there is there is the leading of the spirit to do that and of course it involves a time within which it needs to be done and so on so um build by inspiration the other thing is also to build um i'm just using the word to build by design um meaning you you are intentional about it you are intentional about it so it doesn't mean that um, you are not spirit led you are not spirit inspired right but uh you know when we depend on god we we have the precepts we have the principles of god right and we have the presence of god leading us guiding us um uh so yeah <laughs> inspire before it okay yeah so when we say inspiration um it's not just to inspire others but you know you inspired by the holy spirit you know probably you know uh, i'm just using that word inspiration but um you know to wait on god god gives the idea and you do it and also to build by design in the sense you are intentional right you say okay this is the plan this is what god has given so you know what can i do right what what, what you know what do i need to do in order to reach here so being intentional about certain things right um so say um hey did god give a dream or a you know did he do this uh, well no but he gave the big picture and in order to reach that i need to do this in the natural i know that these are things that need to be done so you build intentionally as well okay uh, you know it says uh, uh, five locations so uh, hey but did god say okay you start here well no but i need to investigate find out if the place is available and then you know uh, go there and start it and do it right so uh, inspiration and being intentional in building the work so both need to go hand in hand um i've seen that um okay then the other aspect is the the spiritual again i'm just using um these words uh the spiritual and um the administrative side you know the structural um spiritual responsibilities so so uh giving equal importance to both like because we know that well ministry work is spiritual work uh when we say spiritual it means that uh, it involves the spirit of god it involves being ministering ministering to the spirit of man so uh, it is spiritual the word the, the prayer the worship um you know emphasis on that being rooted in the word being led by the spirit very important um so it is spiritual work um but what undergirds the spiritual is the administrative side we need to understand that and we see a you know uh, we see that when we read uh, 1 corinthians uh, you know, 12 we see helps administrations romans 12 we again see uh, leadership and so on so there is the the administrative the structural uh, side of things so never neglect that okay because um, uh, we neglect uh, one of these it has the ability to pull down the other right that you can have a great um i mean a well oiled machine machinery you know in terms of ministry uh where everything is like process driven and you know you have things in place you have leaders in place you could be doing that but the minute we neglect the spiritual you see that you know that bringing down it could be well oiled but there's no you know there's no fruit the way you were designed to you know be fruitful and it pulls down the administrative side as when people are feeling you know it's it's they don't feel feeling fulfilled even though you know it's all in place etc and vice versa right so uh, spiritual and administrative responsibility okay let's take a break i think it's um, uh, and then we'll come back uh, we might not use up the entire session right the whole uh, probably we'll we'll have some questions also uh, and discussions um, but we'll come back after the break okay <laughs> 